Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today I have a little bit of a book wrap up for you. I'm really hoping I get better at wrap up videos in 2020. Um, haven't been fantastic with them basically since we moved. And I don't have that excuse anymore so it is what it is. Um, so these go back into November. November I did not have a very good reading month at all. I only maybe read three books, four books, if that. And the only reason I even got that many done is because um, I went on a girls weekend and was able to fly through an entire book that weekend plus get a good starting on the next one. And then I just got into a not so great book slump. So reading slump, whatever you want to call it. But then December has actually been pretty decent, um, even though it was crazy Christmas time. But anyways, let's just start with, with the books that I've read. These really aren't in order, actually, if I want to go in order. I can't move these around. Um, first one I got read, I literally read in a weekend, is Tell Me Three Things by Julie Buxbaum. Really sweet YA book um, that takes place in California. It's about a girl, what's her name? Gosh, girl, guy. I gotta get better with names. Um, Jessie. She, her mother passes away. She's from Chicago and her dad gets remarried somewhat quickly to someone living in California and so she has to move. And moves into with this, to this huge house. Goes to this very high-end boarding school. Feels very out of place. Um, so she's dealing with losing her mom moving, losing her best friend because her best friend's back in Chicago, not really finding any friends there and kind of starts corresponding with somebody that she goes to school with. They That person calls themselves somebody, nobody, um, through text messages and emails. And so you see a lot of that throughout the book, which is why I was really able to get through it really pretty quick. Um, and he, this person kind of helps her figure things out. So it was really sweet. Like I said, I read this in a weekend. It went really quick and I really, really liked it. This tell me three things piece of it is something they kind of, that this somebody, nobody brings up and is just like, okay, tell me three things. And I've actually done it with my kids a couple times. I'm like, just tell me three things that happened at school or tell me three things you did today. So I do like it that I got that out of it. The next one I read, both of these were for our book club in November. Yes was I'm Not Dying With You Tonight by Kimberly Jones and Gilly Siegel. Again, really enjoyed this book. Another YA book, so you have Lena and Campbell. They are not friends. They are, they don't even associate with the same social circles. Um, Lena is, no, Campbell is. Lena is African -America, Cam American, Campbell is white, and they are forced to kind of survive a night together. Um, I loved this. You get each chapter, so it goes back and forth between Campbell and Lena. They both realize they need to depend on each other, even though they have so many differences, they need to push them aside in order to figure out how they're going to survive that night. So highly encourage anybody to pick that one up. And then the book that kind of got me, and it's not even this book's fault. I feel bad that I got into a reading slump at this book because I really enjoyed this book, but it took me so long to finish this because I just kept thinking of everything else in the world to do other than read. But I did finally get through Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. This book was sent to me by Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand during our Advent Book Exchange last year. So glad I picked this up. Really enjoyed this story. This follows, or it takes place in California's gold country in the 1850s, which hello, historical fiction. Um, and we follow Angel who works at a brothel and has kind of had a really shitty life handed to her, but she meets Michael, who is very religious, a very Christian man, and God has told Michael he needs to marry Angel, and he does, and Angel is not having it right away. Um, so it follows their relationship and what happens, and I loved it. I really loved it, even though it took me forever to read it. It's not the book's fault. It's all me. So then, I don't know where I went from there. I feel like I'm missing it. Oh, I read The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. Whoa, like, whoa. Definitely was a different book. I was expecting, I don't know, more thrillerish, but it wasn't. It was just 
Weird Mysterious. A weird mystery? Can I call it that? Um, it talks, it follows this family who is fairly well to do and the entire book is kind of narrated by from the children's perspective and there's dual timelines so you have like present day and then what happened when they were kids. So because it's the children's perspective, understanding fully why things happened is still a little a little bit missing and maybe I missed it, I don't know. Um, but they're a well-to-do family and I think they were kind of hit with some hard financial times and so they started allowing some other people to live in the house and the person, the people they invited in were not the best, they didn't have the best intentions and they started to slowly kind of take over this family. Um, kind of turn it into a little bit of a cult. There are some crazy twists. It was, it's just insane. It's insane. It's, it's the weirdest, wildest ride. And I highly, highly encourage you to read it. I don't have it anymore because I've already lent it out because I just need more people to read this so I can talk to them about it. But that was the book of the month book, book that I read. And my mom also read it and she was just as much in love with this book as I was. Very good. So then as I do most Christmases is I picked up Skipping Christmas by John Grisham. I just love revisiting this book. Um, it gives me a little bit of perspective because I usually pick it up when I'm a little bit in a grinchy mood like Mr. Crank. Um, and it just helps me realize why we do the things we do. So this is, if you haven't heard of it, there's a movie called Christmas with the Cranks that was based on this book, but we have um, Luther and Nora Crank, whose daughter goes away to the Peace Corps. Um, so they decide they're gonna skip Christmas and save the money and kind of what happens with that. So it's cute, definitely should read it. And then I picked up The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. I guess I was in a Christmassy book mood and I loved this book. I'm definitely reading this more or rereading this again. Um, so this is a Christmas Carol retelling. So we have Holly Chase who is met by um, the ghosts of Christmas past, present and future one night and she decides to not make any changes and because of that she ends up kind of well passing away early and she ends up being the ghost of Christmas past and it is fantastic it's YA it's cute it's Christmassy I love the spin and the liberties they took with it being a Christmas Carol kind of retelling it was just fantastic I love it I gotta read it again so then we kind of, that brings us to Christmas break and found a lot of reading time this Christmas break. I read like, gosh, this one's almost a 500 page book and an almost 400 page book. Yeah, we, we got some major reading in during this break. But I picked up The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sapetti's oh, Glorious. Shouldn't have doubted it because it's Ruta Sapetti's, but Glorious. So this takes place in 18 or in the 1950s in Madrid, Spain, following the Spanish Civil War. They have a dictator in charge of things that's not making things very easy for life in Spain, but yet it has recently kind of opened up to American tourism. And so we follow our main character, Daniel, who is there with his parents. He's from Texas. Um, and he gets to know one of the maids at the hotel he's staying in, Anna. They, they have a a friendship that kind of emerges from there and he is an aspiring photojournalist and so he's kind of looking to her to be like you know what give me some real life what is life in Spain really like and she does she teaches him what it's really like and it is so sad what happened and Ruta Sepetis does her research like it's she I've seen her speak and the work she puts in to make sure that the events that happened in the war or what not in the war the events that happened in the book the places are true the timeline of things is true like she even has a whole section back here of references of where she got um her inspiration from and it's like four pages long so it just opened my eyes to what life was like in the late 1950s in spain and it was not pleasant not at all fantastic book and then the last one i literally just finished last night legit finished last night Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. Five stars, hello. Like, it's Colleen Hoover, it's fantastic. Um, this really centers around a mother-daughter relationship that um, these two are trying to kind of put their life back together after, after a horrible tragedy happens. 
they're both holding back information because they're trying to protect the other one, yet it is blowing up in their faces. It's amazing. It's awesome. It's Colleen Hoover. I love it. Anyways, that's what I've read lately. I'm literally not reading anything at this moment, but I have a few that I want to pick up. I still have a few days off of work, so I'm hoping to get through one more book. I would love that. Um, otherwise, leave a comment below. What have you read lately? That's been great. I always love suggestions. Hopefully it's one that I have on my shelf. Um, otherwise, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you next time. Bye.